Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to this online edition of Einstein Asietna. I'm Francesca Cifelli. I'm a geology professor at the University of uh, Roma 3. And uh, first of all, just to share with you my sadness for not being physically together to join this meeting in one of the most beautiful regions of Italy, Sicily. But I think that this is life, so just resist and hope to see the next year. And so today, um, even if it is online, we will uh, see together uh, some uh, ideas to make uh, practical activities in a classroom with students um, in order to simulate them in learning uh, scientific topics, in particular, uh, for instance, some uh, uh, geological processes that uh, characterize their uh, territory, such as earthquakes that we will see today. Uh, very often, uh, when uh, <clears throat> after the occurrence of an earthquake, many people, too many I would uh, say, wonder why so many earthquakes uh, occur uh, in Italy. From uh, a scientific point of view, uh, this answer is uh, very well known. We know that uh, Italy is uh, a seismic country from uh, uh, the plate tectonic uh, theory. Uh, today we know that uh, uh, the lithosphere, the upper part of uh, our planet, is uh, a puzzle of uh, plates. And these plates move uh, and interact with each other in a, a different way, as we see from this uh, picture. They can uh, converge, they can uh, diverge, or they can move one beside the other. And this interaction occurs along their boundary. So these regions are um, very active areas. Um, we know a lot of information about earthquakes. I show this video because it is a, a very a nice visualization about the distribution of earthquakes and their size in the world. Uh, you see uh, the size uh, of circles indicate the magnitude of earthquakes, so the energy released during an earthquake, whereas the color indicates we can see just a few seconds are passed and uh, we see that uh, um, there are the earthquakes don't occur uh, everywhere but always in the same uh, areas. We can see areas for instance here where earthquakes are shallow, the, the red circles that you can see in the, in the map, and small, the circles are, are small. But areas where uh, uh, there are big earthquakes, just visualize this, that is uh, uh, the Sumatra, the big Sumatra earthquakes. So these red lines, uh, as you can see, they, these are uh, identify the divergent plate uh, margins. Here we can see, for instance, the uh, mid-Atlantic ridge, where is the mouse here, or the, the Indian one, etc. And uh, um, the areas, you, you are seeing the, the circles, you see also these big uh, circles, um, where earthquakes are deeper and uh, the energy is more, these are identified the circum-Pacific margin. You see the Pacific, the Pacific plate is very well fine, defined. And also there is uh, an area here, uh, more or less uh, east-west uh, um, along it, that is uh, the Alpine Himalayan chain. So we are seeing that uh, time is uh, uh, moving, is flowing, but the earthquakes always occur in the same areas. And uh, here in this, uh, in this area, <clears throat> in a few seconds, we will see the Tohoku uh, earthquakes uh, occurred in uh, uh, 2011. Yes, okay, this is the big, uh, the big earthquake. So, this video is, uh, uh, is very interesting because uh, it shows how the um, earthquakes uh, doesn't, don't, don't occur. This is the representation of uh, all 15 years uh, earthquakes occur, occur along well-defined zone and plate tectonics explains very well this, uh, uh, this distribution. We also see uh, that uh, big earthquakes uh, occurred um, in very uh, concentrated areas, and in particular, 
where uh, um, the, um, the oceanic uh, lithosphere sink under the continental lithosphere. Uh, in this picture, we see uh, earthquakes with magnitude uh, um, more than uh, eight. So what is uh, um, the magnitude? The magnitude expresses, uh, represents the energy that is uh, released uh, when an earthquake uh, occurs. We see that one degree of difference uh, is a lot of energy because uh, one degree of difference means 10 times the amplitude and 32 times the uh, released energy. In order to visualize this, uh, um, the, what is the, uh, the magnitude, what the mag magnitude of an earthquake means, we can use a, a simple laboratory approach made of uh, uh, spaghetti. We use spaghetti for this uh, experiment. Many teachers know how much uh, um, is important to use a laboratory approach and how much it helps in uh, visualizing natural processes, which very often remain abstract phenomena, so they are difficult to, uh, to understand. We, um, the, the, for students, it is important to understand that earthquakes are natural phenomena, that uh, they are the consequence of a sudden release of energy in the uh, Earth's uh, lithosphere. And this release of energy uh, creates uh, seismic waves, and so the shaking of the surface that we, uh, we, uh, we feel. So why we consider spaghetti? Because spaghetti uh, can be considered a very a nice uh, analog material of rocks because, uh, of course, when they, they are uh, raw, not cooked, they have uh, an elastic behavior uh, like rocks. So if we consider a force, if we applied a force to uh, one uh, spaghetto, for instance, we try to bend it, the spaghetti behaves elas elastically, so they have uh, uh, an elastic behavior. So they tend to recover uh, the, um, their shape if the force is removed. But if we apply the force um, and we exceed the breaking limits, the spaghetti breaks. The breaking is the equivalent to the moment in which the rocks breaks because they are stressed by the tectonic forces that uh, act in, uh, in the lithosphere between uh, uh, lithospheric uh, plates. So by breaking spaghetti, by breaking rocks, the release energy um, is in the form of uh, waves, of seismic waves. And this is what we uh, perceive and what, we, uh, what the instruments uh, measure. So coming back to spaghetti, how we can explain uh, the magnitude. For instance, if we consider um, an earthquake that releases an energy equal to magnitude five, most of the Italian earthquakes uh, have this uh, uh, value of magnitude, we must, we must uh, think on the energy released in breaking one spaghetti. So this means that uh, the force involved is very little. If we imagine to uh, release energy equal to magnitude six, as in this uh, uh, example, the force involved must be uh, the force necessary to break 32 spaghetti. We saw that the one degree is a 32 times more of energy. This for magnitude seven, it means uh, il, uh, 1,000 of spaghetti. For magnitude uh, um, eight, uh, 32,000 of spaghetti. And if we think to the very big earthquakes that occur along the circum-Pacific margin, magnitude nine means that we have to uh, use a force to break one million of spaghetti and even, uh, even more. So um, what we can uh, see, uh, what we can say, sorry, about the size and distribution of uh, uh, Italian earthquakes. This is uh, our um, tectonic configuration in, uh, uh, in Italy. Just uh, have a look of the, um, the main earthquakes that occurred in the last uh, century. This is the Reg Reggio Calabria and Messina earthquakes magnitude seven and uh, a lot of uh, uh, victims. Uh, this is the Avezzano. Uh, you see here the uh, localization of the earthquake. The Avezzano earthquake in 1915, 3,000 victims and magnitude seven. In uh, Friuli, Venezia Giulia, in the northeastern part of Italy, um, the magnitude was 6.4 and uh, a lot of people, uh, homeless uh, people after this uh, uh, earthquake. In uh, Irpinia, uh, 40 years ago, some days ago, there was the um, occurrence of the, the, 
the anniversary of this uh, uh, terrible earthquake, uh, just uh, have a look of the homeless uh, um, that uh, we had after this uh, uh, earthquake. This is uh, in Umbria Marche, this is the uh, San, uh, San Francesco uh, Basilica uh, that was uh, um, deeply damaged after this uh, earthquake. Mm, in Molise, uh, you see the, the magnitude was not so big, but uh, um, this uh, um, earthquake was uh, sadly um, uh, known for the uh, death of uh, an entire class of uh, uh, students. Uh, L'Aquila in 2009, 65,000 people without uh, uh, their own house after the earthquakes. In Emilia Romagna in 2012, have a look of the uh, localization. This is the uh, Amatrice earthquake in 2016, magnitude 6, and one of the last earthquakes was in Ischia, in the Ischia island, where the magnitude was very low. Magnitude 4 means uh, the strength that we have to use is uh, less than the force that we have to use for break one spaghetto, just to have uh, an idea, but the victims were two. So if we see uh, the, um, the uh, localization of the epicenter, epicenter, sorry, we can say that uh, the distribution of earthquakes in Italy is not uh, random at all, but uh, the, this, the distribution uh, nicely follow the uh, elongation, the uh, configuration of the uh, margin between the African plate and Euroasiatic plate. So plate tectonics explain very well the uh, seismic configuration of uh, Italian earthquakes. This is the, um, the uh, tectonic configuration of our uh, the Mediterranean area. Uh, it is a, a very complex plate margin because see the African plate uh, very heterogeneous uh, laterally uh, that sink uh, below the Eurasian plate. If we come back to these uh, uh, images uh, uh, that we saw in, at the beginning, um, also in the, in the light of what we have uh, seen so far, we can say that, uh, yes, for sure, Italy is a seismic country, and it is a seismic country because it is located along the plate margin. But also, if we uh, remember the, the video and also the images that we see, we can say that uh, um, compared to, to other areas of the planet, like uh, Japan or South America or South, Southeast Asia, uh, Asia, sorry, for instance, the, um, the earthquakes are not so big, so the magnitudes are, uh, um, are not so high. But despite the, uh, the modest energies involved, every time an earthquake occurs <coughs> in Italy, we have seen that uh, from the different images that we see, we saw, uh, the damage produced is very, very huge. At this point, we have to remember what does it mean, uh, the seismic risk. And we know that the seismic risk is uh, given by the combination of uh, several factors. The natural, um, the hazard, sorry, that is related to a natural event. So for instance, uh, to uh, an earthquake, it is the probability that an earthquake that uh, exceeds uh, a, a threshold value will occur in a, in a given area and in a certain period of time. We have uh, the vulnerability, that is the uh, propensity of a structure to, um, to suffer damage of a certain level when uh, an earthquake occurs, and the exposure is another uh, value that is uh, the estimate of the loss of human life, uh, economic damage, and damage to uh, the historical and cultural heritage. So the risk is the sum of this, the combination of these uh, uh, factors. So if we see the uh, Italian uh, territory, we can say that the Italy has a, a medium high seismic hazard due to the frequency and intensity of uh, the seismic uh, phenomena. It is characterized by a high vulnerability because the, in particular, uh, the fragility of the buildings and also the uh, infrastructural uh, assets. And also the um, exposure is very high because uh, um, the population density is very, is very high in, in a territory that is uh, quite small. And also the artistic and the monumental heritage um, that probably are uh, unique in the, in the world. So what uh, we have to um, transmit to students uh, and to try to 
um, deeply understand is that uh, natural hazards are unavoidable, unavoidable, sorry, my English, but because, because natural events are, uh, uh, they represent the force of the nature. But what is important to understand is that uh, natural disasters uh, are not. And this is possible only if we reduce the vulnerability and of course the exposure. This is the only way to reduce the uh, seismic risk. So what we have to transmit, uh, to share with students uh, using laboratories, rab laboratories in class. We have to um, uh, share the und understand uh, that earthquakes uh, are natural phenomena. We have to understand that uh, earthquakes are not predictable. And we have to understand that uh, uh, the only way uh, to uh, um, uh, face uh, the seismic risk is uh, prevention. The earthquake, we, see, we saw the uh, definition before. I just want to show this video to understand uh, how an earthquake is generated. It is a simple mechanical model that uh, we can uh, use to represent a section of the in this case, we are looking at uh, uh, an extensional fault. So this means that uh, the fault uh, reproduces. In this model, what we see, you see the spring. The spring is a very important element in this uh, model because uh, it is. So this, the spring represents uh, uh, the ability of rocks uh, to deform uh, elastically. So what we see, we see that. Uh, um, when we stretch the, uh, the spring, we see several times this experiment, you see we are stretching the, uh, the spring, the rocks deform elastically. We don't see any deformation uh, visible at the surface. But what happens when the uh, breaking point uh, is exceeded? The breaking points, it means the, um, the um, the limit of strength of, uh, of rocks. It, it uh, happens that the rock, the rock here uh, reproduced in this, uh, in this part of the, uh, of the model, and the two blocks move in the opposite direction. So this is a very simple model, but uh, explain very well what is a, a fault and how an earthquake uh, uh, occur. This is a, a beautiful picture of the uh, Monte Vettore fault a normal fault, an extensional fault uh, that moved during the last earthquakes. We can also have uh, different types of faults. You see the, um, this, this, this is a, a compressive fault. You see, this is the fault plane. In this case, the uh, spring is uh, compressed. And so the two blocks, when the uh, strength is uh, overcome, they, uh, yes, like this, they move one along, one, uh, over the other. So they uh, produce a shortening of, uh, uh, of the crust. This is a beautiful picture of uh, a fort in Japan. Japanese uh, have a very deep uh, seismic culture. So they also used uh, these uh, um, features of uh, um, nature to share with, uh, with people uh, the understanding of uh, earthquakes. So this fault uh, uh, became a museum, and I think that this is a very beautiful aspect of this uh, uh, count. The last uh, fault I want to show, just for complete the type of faults, is the um, strike slip uh, uh, faults. We see that uh, uh, the block when the breaking limit is exceeded, slide uh, one uh, next to each other, and this reproduces the famous. Uh, um, um, fault, and during this uh, earthquake, the, Sa the San Francisco earthquake, you see that the uh, fence was uh, dislocated a few meters after the sliding of uh, blocks. We can also use uh, uh, our beautiful uh, seismic box to uh, understand what is an earthquake, and uh, we use uh, a very simple uh, apparatus. You see, in this case, we use lasagna. That it, that have the, lasagna has the same elastic behavior of uh, spaghetti when they are raw, of course. And uh, we can use or lasagna to um, simulate the breaking on a fault or a block sleeping on uh, the sandpaper to simulate the reactivation of a fault. This 
apparatus that is very, very simple is very important because uh, by using uh, this uh, piezoelectric uh, sensor, we can uh, um, um, measure, we can record after an earthquake, so it means after the breaking of the lasagna or the sliding of the block, we can measure the vibration of the, uh, of the medium uh, which, uh, where the, the waves propagate. So this means that uh, if we know the distance between uh, the two piezoelectric uh, uh, elements, we can uh, uh, calculate and we know also the, the time uh, of uh, the wave arrivals between one station and the other, we can uh, calculate the uh, wave speed. So this is a good exercise for students. Um, sorry, I just remember because I see the, the, um, the, um, the website. In this website, we can uh, um, have all the information about the uh, seismobox. Uh, seismobox. Uh, Francois Tilken is the, um, the person that uh, created the seismobox and that uh, uh, manages this uh, website. Okay. Uh, Another key aspect of earthquakes is uh, understanding why they cannot be uh, predicted. This is a very simple uh, apparatus that uh, uh, explains very well what is the uh, seismic, seismic uh, cycles. We know that the fault uh, accumulates energy and releases energy. This uh, accumulation and release uh, of energy is not constant during time. So it means that, uh, and we can visualize uh, from this uh, block uh, that slip on the sandpaper. And you see that uh, slip through times, but the time between one slip and the other is not, uh, uh, is not the same. And also the amount of the slip is not the, uh, the same. So this means that uh, we cannot predict uh, what is the time between one slip and the other. So it means that we cannot predict the, when the next earthquakes will occur. And also we cannot say how much the slip will be between one slip and the other, because this depends from the heterogeneity of a fault in nature, the asperities that characterize the, uh, the fault. So this uh, experiment that is very simple allow us to um, visualize the reason why earthquakes are not uh, uh, predictable. So we can say that uh, in an active fault, uh, energy is uh, slowly stored and is released in a, an unpredictable way. So no, no, there is no possibility <clears throat> to forecast when and how big the next earth earthquake will be. But what we can <clears throat> say, what, because we know very well, is uh, where the um, the earthquakes will uh, uh, occur. It means uh, in uh, seismogenic uh, uh, areas. The last uh, <clears throat> uh, aspect that I want to, uh, to show you is the, um, uh, the understanding of the consequence of an earthquake on buildings and the importance of prevention. This is uh, a nice example of uh, <clears throat> the uh, behavior of uh, buildings. We know that all buildings have uh, a natural frequency of oscillation, the, the resonance frequency. That is the, uh, the number of natural back and forth vibration made in, uh, in one second by the uh, building. So when uh, uh, seismic waves uh, shake the ground beneath the building <clears throat> at its resonance uh, frequency, this structure will begin, begin to uh, sway back and forth. And uh, a factor that uh, largely um, controls the resonance frequency is the height of the building. With this apparatus uh, that is possible to build uh, following the instruction uh, in the seismic box, we can see this phenomenon. You see that we have uh, three different uh, uh, buildings, three, eight, uh, with a different eight. We start with low velocity, that means uh, lowest, the highest uh, building will start to uh, oscillate. But if we um, increase the velocity, so it means that we increase the uh, frequency, we will see that the eight uh, building will stop and the intermediate building will start to oscillate. And if we uh, continue to uh, increase the velocity, the small one will start to, um, to oscillate. 
So this phenomenon is very important and tell us how much is important to understand the frequency that arrives at the ground of where a building is built. The last example is the soil liquefaction. Many of you know this uh, phenomenon. And uh, we know that uh, some sediments like uh, uh, sands, uh, they are, uh, um, the, the grains uh, um, are loose uh, and the soil, uh, uh, is, uh, these grains are held together by the friction. So it means that uh, um, a soil, um, um, a sandy soil can support a vertical pressure, for instance, uh, um, if an earthquake occurs, uh, the shaking uh, destabilizes the, the, the soil because it increases the space between the grains. So it means that the friction uh, doesn't work anymore and the structure is lost and the soil flows like a liquid. We saw in this picture, but we can saw in, uh, um, in this video, you see that uh, at the beginning, the building was uh, stable, but when uh, we shake uh, the table, uh, everything, uh, um, the resistance of the soil is, uh, uh, is lost. So to conclude, uh, what is important uh, when uh, we um, speak about uh, earthquakes? It, it is important to share, to transmit the, uh, the knowledge because the scientific research um, um, move to the advancement of knowledge. But it, two ways are very important. One is that uh, this uh, knowledge is uh, transmitted to the population, in particular to young people, to students, because they will become probably in the future um, very active uh, uh, citizens. So in this way, uh, we will increase the awareness. And from the other part, of course, uh, this knowledge has to be received from politicians because all in this way it becomes uh, um, the ur an urban planning. So all, only uh, by applying laws and rules, uh, we can really uh, make prevention in uh, uh, our country. Thank you very much.